Thousands of German captured Yanks were snatched from slow, lingering death as Nazi prisoners when our armies fanned out over the Reich. Starved, many of them captives only since December, yet 40 to 90 pounds thinner, they receive a light, nourishing broth first. And ugly, unattended wounds are dressed as the first step in nursing them back to health. Medical officers marvel that some of the freed men were still alive. Heroes such as Private Richard Mulder of Lincoln, Nebraska. Yes, this is what the Nazis did to our men whom they captured. There is life here, though most of the story is death. Death. At Hadamar, an insane asylum served the mad Hun well. Behind its high walls, their victims, Poles, Greeks, Russians, any non-Germans, were systematically slaughtered. All we could do was to dig up and give the dead a decent burial, including many women who gave up their lives to Nazism. These newsreel and Signal Corps pictures were officially recorded for posterity. One of the first steps by officers is to question the asylum heads. Autopsies showed overdoses of morphine and quick-acting poisons in many cases. The record clerk is quick to point an accusing finger at the institution head. Mass murder, of course. But these men put their victims to death with little torture. And that can't be said for other German hellholes. The murder mill at Ordorf brings out the full horror and bestiality of the Nazi scum. And General Eisenhower, a man hardened by the blood and shock of war, seems appalled at these unbelievable sights. Accompanied by General Bradley on his revolting mission, and also by General Patton, hard-boiled yet visibly moved, the Supreme Commander sees demonstrations of the torture racks. Most camp officers fled before the advancing allies, but some fell into our hands, and with townsfolk are forced to witness the devil's work of the men they should be ashamed to call countrymen. How many were put to the torch, no one will know. How many while alive? Lime pits, flesh-eating, bone-consuming lime accounted for others. Germans are conducted to a murder shed where thousands too ill to be herded to the rear by Nazis were slain in cold blood. The thought of the horror awaiting them is almost too much for the Germans themselves, but brutality is fought with stern measures. It was in this grim hell that the Nazis piled up bodies of their victims like common cordwood, sprinkling lime between the layers to assist decomposition. The inspection over, they come out shaken to the core. They have seen the handiwork of their compatriots, which has changed the name of Germany to infamy. And not all their tears can erase one letter for all time. Most dreadful of all the camps was at Buchenwald, where only 20,000 of the original 80,000 were found alive. This murder weapon accounted for hundreds of deaths and the disfigurement of thousands of others. Of the quarter of the prison population left alive when rescued by the Americans, thousands were beyond human aid. Easy death was the most that life could offer them. Slave laborers worked on the V-2 bomb, serial numbers tattooed on their stomachs. Six furnaces, each holding three bodies, were used in cremating the dead and often the living. Don't turn away, look burned alive, horror unbelievable, yet true. The vile, inhuman beasts took pride in their concentration camp at Nordhausen. Here, a mere handful were found alive when the Americans overran the area. War is not a pretty thing at best, but no words can express the world's disgust at Germany's organized carnage. Some lay dying among the bodies of the dead.
The spark of life ebbs fast in most of those still alive. But American medical men work desperately to save those they can. Ridden with all the worst diseases known to mankind and without medical attention or food enough to keep them alive, the prisoners died daily by the hundreds after rescue, despite any aid we could give them. American officers rounded up civilians and forced them to atone, in a small degree, for what their countrymen had done. Protesting, with the stench of death in their nostrils, they were forced to remove the victims to a hillside grave for better burial. For the first time, America can believe what they thought was impossible propaganda. Here is documentary evidence of sheer mass murder. Murder that will blacken the name of Germany for the rest of recorded history. <laughs>